Hey guys, it's Dylan. So today we're going to start the on-chain data series. And you know how there's like financial analysts in the traditional financial space? Well, that's exactly what studying and understanding the on-chain data is when it comes to blockchain and Bitcoin and all of these cryptocurrencies. So what I'm saying is that if you can understand these on-chain metrics and interpret them and apply them, you can not only make more money personally, but you can set yourself up for future careers in the blockchain space, or if you ever wanted to start a little online community this is an excellent topic to do it around because the thing is is people don't know about this there's only a handful of people that are in this space so the opportunity is massive and it's really important to know this data and I think it's fun getting into the actual data and all of the information I'll be presenting is from Glassnode the link is below definitely check out their site they are pretty much the gold standard when it comes to on-chain data so today we're going to be talking about realized capitalization versus the traditional traditional market cap that everybody knows and follows. And yes, you will definitely want to pay attention because as you can see, just in the last few years, there have been times when the realized market cap in pink has actually exceeded the regular market cap in green. And both of those times, look what happened after. We had a massive price run up. So this indicator has been historically very accurate at predicting the bottom of these bear markets. But first we need to understand what the UTXO model is. It just stands for unspent transaction outputs. Transaction is TX. Now Bitcoin uses this model and Cardano uses this model, but Ethereum uses an account based model. Today, we're only going to focus on the UTXO accounting blockchains. So when you see a single balance in your crypto wallet, this may actually be made up of any number of UTXOs based on your past transaction history. When added together, these UTXOs sum to the total balance held in your specific wallet address. So a real world example, if you want to send someone 3.75 Bitcoin, but only have a UTXO worth 10 Bitcoin in your wallet, you must send the entire UTXO to the recipient and then receive change just like you would with paying in cash. As such, when you made this transfer, the recipient would receive 3.75 Bitcoin and the remaining 6.25 in change would be sent back to your address as a new smaller UTXO. So just like if you go to Starbucks and buy a $3.50 coffee with a $10 bill, you can't rip part of the $10 bill off. You give them the whole 10, they give you back the change. The exact same thing happens with the UTXO accounting model. Now, yes, in the crypto space, these transactions do involve fees. And just so you know, these fees are actually deducted from the amount of change you get in return unlike when paying in cash. And as mentioned, the other type of blockchains that use the account-based method, these represent coins as balances within an account similar to how you would think of your traditional bank account. These accounts can be controlled by a private key or by a smart contract, and account-based models are mostly popular among smart contract-focused blockchains, hence Ethereum, and most people would think Cardano, but remember Cardano actually uses a form, a bit different form of the UTXO model. I will link this article below if you wanna read about the account-based chains, but we're not going to get into that today. So, realized capitalization, what is it? It's a variation of market cap that values each UTXO based on the price when it was last moved, as opposed to its current value. When a coin that was last moved at significantly cheaper prices is spent, it will revalue the coins to the current price and thus increase the realized cap by a corresponding amount. Similarly, if a coin is spent at a lower price than when it was last moved, it will revalue to a cheaper price and have a corresponding decrease on the realized cap. So basically this metric can therefore be considered an estimate of the aggregate cost basis for the network. But what does this actually mean? Just stick with me. It really is used to estimate the true economic weight or the global wealth stored in the asset. Its aim is to discount long, dormant, or lost coins as they are considered to be of low economic value. For example, Bitcoin that were last spent in 2009 before Bitcoin had a price and are now lost will have an economic value in the realized cap framework equal to zero. Market capitalization, on the other hand, will consider these coins in the calculation and thus may be considered to overvalue the total market size. And to simplify, the main thrust of this metric is to remove the weight of all of those lost coins because if there are 15% of all of existing Bitcoin that are lost, the actual economic value of those coins is really zero because they are lost. And remember, this is the metric that everybody follows on coin metrics and really everywhere. It actually includes that 15% 
20% of Bitcoins in the total value of Bitcoin, which is clearly not accurate. So where the market cap trades above the realized cap, which is most of the time, the market is an aggregate profit. And it's really simple. It's just like the last transaction of the coins that people are holding is lower than the value of the actual market or the current spot price. So if these holders were to then sell those coins, it would boost the realized value because remember, it's just the latest transaction so if you were holding coins that were last transacted at a lower price, it's going to increase the realized value and same on the opposite side. So how can you actually apply this? Well, historically, the market cap has traded at or below the realized cap in only a few instances. However, each has presented opportunities that in hindsight represented cyclical bottoms for bear markets. Remember, this is only one metric. It is not the gospel. So just keep that in mind. It's just one tool that you can use. And bull markets tend to be characterized by a steep deep uptrend of the realized cap. And in case you're not familiar, the regular market cap is just the total circulating supply times the latest market price. But remember, unlike with stocks, large fractions of crypto tend to get lost, go unclaimed, or became otherwise inert through different bugs in the software. So Realize Cap does a very good job of weighting the coins according to their actual presence in the Bitcoin economy. It's one of a new generation of economic measures that blends market and on-chain data. But as with all new metrics, there are definitely some things to be aware of. For example, one challenge is dealing with deep cold storage coins, interpreting realized cap for coins with little turnover and generalizing it to account-based coins. So that third part, account-based coins, we're not talking about today. And that first part, deep cold storage, just means people that are hodling and have done that for years, basically they haven't moved their coins for five years, 10 years, that could actually seem like a lost coin and thus those could be devalued. And this right here would go through an example of Satoshi's basically 1 million coins. If he decided to you know, come and sell them on the market, they would go from having a realized cap price of zero because back in 2009, the market price was zero and they haven't moved. They've been in cold storage. So now if they are moved or spent or sold, that's gonna change the realized cap in a huge way. And one more example, really to drive it home. For UTXO coins, this consists in valuing outputs at the price of the time of their creation. For example, for a UTXO currency of supply 10 and a market price of 10, its market cap would be 100. This is the traditional way. But now we're gonna take a look at the realized cap situation. So as you can see, that same 10 Bitcoin, now we have split up into transactions. Back in 2009, we had 8.3 moved. Then in 2011, we had 1.2. In 2018, we had 0.5. This is the price at each transaction essentially and the US dollar value at that time. So to calculate the realized cap, it would just be zero for the 2009 transaction when the market price was zero plus $1.20 plus $5 to equal $6.20 or 6.2% 6 of its market cap would be the realized cap as 83% of the supply hasn't moved for years. That 83% was this first UTXO here when the price was $0. So how you can actually use this and apply this, if you go to Glassnode and create a free account and then start playing around with these charts, we have pink, the Bitcoin realized cap, and the green is the Bitcoin market cap. You can put all different kinds of metrics into the same chart to analyze. So I put this going back to September of 17, roughly about the last four years. Now, as you can see, there have been two times, one right here around January 2019, where the realized cap actually exceeded the market cap. And yet again, they touched around March of 2020. And both times, as you can see, we had a bull run after the fact right here, and then we had yet another one right after the touch right here that has been the biggest bull run yet. And just FYI, I personally would only use it to try to find the bottoms. I would not apply it to try to find the tops in any way. You could if you want to, but I would just be more comfortable sticking with looking for the bottom. And as of just yesterday, you can see Bitcoin's realized cap is about 370 billion versus the market cap of 745 billion. So it's almost a 2X bigger when it comes to the market cap versus the realized cap. And so just remember that the realized capitalization is a truer and more 
more accurate sense of the current economic value in the Bitcoin network because the market cap, the green line, is including all of those lost coins multiplied by the current market price where the realized cap just takes every recent transaction and essentially reprices it at the current market value. And also one more time, you can think of the realized cap like the aggregate cost basis for the network. So if this is the cost basis and the market cap is higher, like right here, this obviously means most of the market is in profit territory. So I hope that this was helpful in some way. Remember to check out Glassnode, the link is below. They have not paid me anything at all. I just love their software. I think they are one of the best companies in the space. And remember to subscribe to the channel for more in this on-chain data series. Please like the video if you did, and I hope you guys have an excellent weekend.